Hi there! I've done a video on the situation of Taiwan, the international status of recognition, and I've predicted, unfortunately correctly, that this status will become a topic of contention in the near future. The US has moved faster than even I anticipated, and last week has changed an important statement on their website of the State Department, where they um, officially declare what's the relationship of the US with Taiwan. Before, it used to say that the, the US had changed recognition from, of the government of China from uh, Taipei to Beijing. Taipei being the capital on the island of Taiwan, where uh, the Republic of China forces fled after losing the civil war against the communist forces. And um, so that statement implied, made it obvious that the US recognized uh, Beijing as the government of the same China that they used to recognize the Republic of China before, which then implies that uh, Taiwan is obviously included in that China. Now, it doesn't say anything to replace that statement, it was just dropped, which, in other words, helps to obfuscate the, the situation how like historically Taiwan and the mainland of China relations were and how the US came to recognize the People's Republic of China. And at the second point, a very important statement is or used to be that the US will not hold high level diplomatic relations with Taiwan and the Republic of China on Taiwan nor will they do anything to support Taiwan independence. They've now dropped this statement and <laughs> the meaning, the reason why it's very uh, important and critical is obvious because uh, Taiwan independence has always been for China an absolute red line. They've always made very clear that if Taiwan declares independence that would be a reason for war for China um, at the same time, China always makes very clear they don't want a war on Taiwan, in Taiwan, about Taiwan. They prefer a peaceful reunification. They've also made clear that peaceful doesn't necessarily mean um, voluntary. It doesn't necessarily mean happily. <laughs> so some people on Taiwan may be unhappy about the reunification. But that's still better than having a war where uh, lots of people on both sides will die. So that's always been the statement of China. And um, the US promised as a precondition to re-establish uh, relationship with the mainland of China, they promised to not work for Taiwan independence. Now they've officially dropped that statement. And the thing is, if we look closely, the US has always been, or at least in last years, the decades, been very active promoting Taiwanese and independence. The, there's various financial flows to organizations on Taiwan that um, have a pro-independence agenda. There's also been military support. Uh, and so they've always been doing this. So the reason why they drop it now from the official statement I can only understand it as a provocation. They want to provoke China into a war. They, they hope, I assume, to overextend China, to, to like, make China get into a war that it doesn't win, which may then destabilize China. Maybe in the assumption that a destabilized China would then become a more pro-West China. I don't even know like how that makes sense because if China became destabilized and fell into chaos, that would not bring any positive for the US. I mean, positive in the sense that they, they, they lose a competitor that's economically powerful and militarily stronger and stronger. But imagine, like, China destabilized, that wouldn't just lead to a transition um, where then some pro-Western democratic forces take over the country and 
and uh, ask to join NATO and, and become best friends with Europe and the US. That's just definitely not going to happen. So what, what rather would happen is there's the possibility of a civil war. There's the possibility of something like the Soviet Union collapse, which was by and large peaceful, but led to a massive destruction of capital, of, of value, of production capacity, which in the case of China would directly impact all those Western companies that produce in China. It's not conceivable how China could, as a political system, collapse, become economically weak without hurting the capital that's invested by Western companies who have their factories, who produce in China. You cannot have both chaos that weakens China and at the same time uh, to keep up the production, the supply chains that are so important to fight the high inflation in the West. So I don't know what the goal is. Um, I also don't find it likely, like I don't find it likely that China will easily be provoked into a war. If there is a war, you know, it may go fast. Uh, the, the Taiwanese military spending is very low in percentage of GDP. It may take longer, like what's happening in Ukraine, uh, where, you know, the, the, the army is just slowly ground down. Um, I don't think there's a realistic scenario which destabilizes the mainland of China. And if it does, again, I don't think that's something that anyone could hope for. So I, I find it very worrying and I don't see an upside on this change of the US stance, of the official stance to not interfere in uh, the inner Chinese conflict between Taiwan and the mainland and to not work for Taiwan independence. I don't see why they dropped it. I don't think it's a good idea. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Please share.